So that winter, his mom got the consumption, which is like a flu, and she died in the cave. It's very wet and damp living inside of a cave near an ocean, especially when all you have is driftwood to burn. So he didn't have a mother. He didn't have a father. He didn't have any uncles, and he didn't have Basil. And uh, so he decided he didn't want to live in the cave dwellings anymore. He wanted to travel. So he decided to travel somewhere warmer to the south. So he started out in the spring, and by Midsummer's Eve, he had found this place called Rosedale. It's in the middle of some woods with a bunch of flowers, which is one of the reasons it was called Rosedale. And he met these other very kind people. They were farmers. They owned orchards and stuff, and they subsisted on. Nobody really knew they lived there. They were very peaceable people. They lived in the middle of the forest, and they uh, picked, they grew flowers, but mostly they just ate vegetables and fruit, and they lived off of that. And there was this beautiful young girl that he fell in love with named Rose. And he stayed with them for a whole year, four seasons. Summer, fall, winter, spring, summer. But that spring... A band of slavers came by and attacked Rosedale. And even though Martin fought as hard as he could, they took Rose. And he swore to the peaceful people of Rosedale that he would find the slavers and bring her back alive so they could get married and live in Rosedale forever. So he tracked them all the way through the woods. Fort, And that is where the slavers sold Rose and all of her friends to these, these sand dwellers. They lived in this uh, fort on the beach in, in front of the ocean, very, very close to the ocean. It was, but the point was it was full of horrible, horrible people. Slavers and thieves and murderers who would all gather together to prey on the innocent people that lived around the beach in the hills. Now, hey, he had no idea how to rescue her because he was all by himself. All the people from Rosedale weren't warriors, so he had actually tracked them down by himself. So he went up on a, a mountain near the fort to see if he could see it. And he ran across this group of people that were sheltering in the woods on the mountain called, that was a, actually traveling circus. Well, these troubadours were very peaceful people, but they were very skilled. Some could jump very carefully, some could juggle, some could swallow swords, some could swallow fire. There was some trapeze artists. There was all kinds of people. And once he told them, the tracking slavers, they were very interested in helping him. So he spent the next couple weeks showing them how they could change their skills from just impressing people and entertaining people into actually fighting. There was somebody who threw daggers at a board, at a target, and he, he taught them how to throw daggers at bad people. So by the end, he had more or less some trained assassins and but that didn't give him an idea on how to get into the fort so finally the leader of the troubadours could... said you know what we're gonna do we're gonna disguise you as a troubadour entertainer so that you can get in there with us and then we'll all break them out together so they rolled right up to the fort with all of their wagons that are cut painted really colorfully and have some of them were dressed up as clowns and some of them were jugglers and they got in because all the murders and thieves, they wanted to be entertained. What the thieves did not know, the bad people didn't know, that is while the show was going on, some of the troubadours were going to sneak in and try to find the slaves and free them. And what the troubadours didn't know is that when the show was over, the murderers planned on just killing them because they didn't want to have to pay for the show. So they only had a very limited amount of time to save everyone. The troubadours started their entertaining, and Martin was up first so that he could sneak away right away. So he did some feats of strength. He punched a hole in a piece of wood, and he threw rocks into the ocean and things like that. Mm. And, um, but pretty soon, he snuck away along with one other troubadour into the fort, and he found Rose in a pit called the Slave Pit. It was a, just a big hole in the sand in the ground with a grate over it so the slaves couldn't get out. And they hadn't been feeding them very well, just things and bits of rotten fish from the ocean. But he found her, and she was alive. So he convinced them that when they broke out, they could fight, help, uh, help fight the bad guys. And they did. And they broke out of the fort, and there was this huge battle between the murderers and thieves and the slaves and the troubadours. And they, run, they were trying to run away, and they saved everyone, except that Rose got stabbed in the back with a spear. She was still able to run away, and they made it all the way up into the mountain, and then she died. 
and Martin was very, very sad. And even though the troubadours were very happy they were able to save the slaves, they could not cheer up Martin, and he did not want to go back to Rosedale without Rose. So he told them where it was so they would have food and a place to stay once they found it, and the slaves could go back home. But he decided to keep traveling, and he kept traveling south. Now he was really sad, though, because not only had Rose died, but the leader of the slavers had broken his father's sword and uh, while he was fighting in the fort. So now he put it on a thong, a necklace on his neck, but he had his a broken sword. So he did not even, he was a warrior without a weapon, which is one of the saddest things there is.